Everybody can hear you. Bows. 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 Yeah. Bows. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the official, lovely Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Walk on, walk on. Hey, man. So, hey, man, we got a, we got a special guest, like I always say, huh? You know, this is is this our second, third, like a vlog. What you got to think about is everybody who come on here is special. Is special in Ain't their that own something? way. This, yeah, so I'm I'm not gonna ever stop saying that. Look yeah. like, but this guy, man, hey, man, I've seen him interview people, man, from Rainwater to Sean Cotton to all, man, all sorts of people, man. You go on this like Kenny B, right? Yep. No, all these Faison people. Faison Love, Faison Love, hey, man, get that man his prop. We giving him his roses while he here, man. Check it, man. We got my boy Big D Derek in the house, man. From what Mogul Media? Hey, what up, though? You know what I'm saying? Can I shoot? This my camera right yeah, here. Yeah, that's you right what there, up, though, man. It's your boy Big D the Mogul, aka Shook Diddy, aka Illuminati Jack, aka Big Thanos, aka Heaven on Earth, aka Dry Rub Shotty. Why? Because I'm good. Before the drip, I don't need no sauce. You understand? Hey. What up, though? He got hey. a lot of AKA. Yeah, yeah. Listen he know what he's doing. Yeah, the, yeah well, you need to get your speech together. This guy I, yeah, right yeah, here yeah, got yeah. a slogan. You got, you, no, Mr. Worry, Mr. I got the it, I got, I got <laughs> it. Go on, go on. ain't going to be enough. But you see, if I say, y'all yeah. won't understand me, though. If I, if I go now, there, we, y'all we, not No, no, we'll, we'll be cool me. with it. We'll be cool with it. We'll be cool. We will edit it and get it out there to the masses. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Say, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Say, man. So, man, we got a lot to talk about, man. Hey, man, let's get to it. Say, man. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I, I looked at you. I said, man, this dude here. I see you, you, you know, you got like a vibe, bro. The way that you come across with your questions is real subtle, real clean. It ain't, and it don't have, it, and, and and people could compare, compare you like the Vlad or something, but it, it don't have no ill will, brother. Yeah, it don't have no ill will. You know what I'm saying? Good people can't. You know, you can't hide being a good person, bro. I mean, you know, I appreciate that. <laughs> but I, you know what? But I ain't gonna lie. If there's an elephant in the room, you gonna bring I'm, it I'm up. I'm bringing it up. I'm trying to bring it up. So I, <laughs> I, I, I lob you the softball questions. I get you ready. Yeah. So what's your favorite color? What did you grow up doing? <laughs> you know what I'm I saying? like this. And then uh, all of a sudden I hit him with so this picture that just hit there. <laughs> well, what's that all about? <laughs> you don't know what? You gotta warm them so, up. You gotta get them right. Yeah, man. So, so w- what would you say would be, because it's only your opinion, because mm-hmm. others might say different. Views might say different. Just okay. because views say different don't mean that's your favorite episode that you recorded. For so sure. which one sticks out to you the most? Um, so one of my favorite ones is definitely, uh, I went to Detroit and I got the interview Big Hurt. Okay. Uh, Big Herc, definitely an OG hip hop guy. You know what I'm saying? That's been around for a minute. That was like one of my favorite ones. And I mean, I, I can say for the first time, I think I was ever nervous in front of a person. Like, you know, yeah. he invited me to his crib. I went down there, I hit my head on the chandeliers, walking in the basement. <laughs> too tall. Trying to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, 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 that's true. Facts. <laughs> but, um, but no, that's, that's definitely one of my ones. Um, for sure, the rainwater one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The second one. Um, Recipe Smoke 3. I think that was one of probably my, my most challenging one. And then I, I think one of the last one that's like I really, 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 really enjoyed will probably be Don Chief. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because he kind of pressed me a little bit about the Dallas gatekeeper list that I dropped. Wow. And, you know, he felt like it wasn't no gatekeepers in Dallas and that nobody should ever be on the list with Jay Prince. So, you know, we kind of had our back and forth about it. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, yeah. You know, I like that. I like that conversation. A lot of people hold Jay Prince up here. Oh, I mean, and rightfully so. When you go really? back into the music uh, background and the thing, the legacy that he put out there with Scarfaces and all the different Willie D's and uh, the, the Fifth Ward boys, you got to give him his respect. You no, know, for sure. when it comes to the music, you can't deny that he's one of the patriarchs to do this. Of course, of course. But you so, got to let these young boys get on here too. Shout out to Say Cheese, Sean Cotton. You can't say he not up there. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying like he led. Well, I can't even say he not legendary like Jay Prince. I mean, Black man, I've been there from the beginning. Number one blogging platform. Just got five um, certified RIAA um, plaques, platinum plaque for uh, cash page. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you, else he got to do, huh? He take and he's taking artists who have no buzz and blowing them up. He not jumping on the bandwagon once they got a a buzz and say, okay, let me take you to the next level. His mo is let me find somebody who has nothing. 
and turn them into something. something. And that's every artist. Spot them, got them. That beatbox challenge. That yeah, you know, yeah. That's Sean Cotton. That's his yeah. artist. You but what, what makes you different from Sean Cotton? Because both of y'all are doing, you know, similar the things. Right. When you come to the blog. So what makes you different from him? Um, Sean, me, Sean is like my brother, man. He's like my little brother. Like, um, we we talk a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, often, probably once, twice a month. Um, he hit me up for more like life advice. I may hit him up more so for like blogging advice. But what makes us different is. I don't know, like, he, he caters more to the younger people. Okay. Like, he get the hottest, the newest, younger artists. Me, my my name of my platform is Mogul State of Mind. So, I'm trying to get people who making mogul moves within their respective fields. That's what's up. And then, also, I like to go back and get that nostalgic. Like, I just did Silk. Did you? You know what I'm saying? Baby, uh, Lil G from Silk. Really? You know what I'm saying? And hearing that, going back and getting them OGs and hearing what they whole process and hearing CeeLo Green tried out for Silk. I you, didn't know that. A, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So you got to check that out, man. I like, got to check that out. That's what I do. Hey, that's nice, man, because you kind of, you hitting on things that we do. We do right. the same right. thing. That's we, what you see in us. We do everything. We do everybody <laughs> and everything. Yeah. And yeah. I know we talk off camera about yeah. politicians. Like when the COVID popped off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hit Judge Clay Jenkins of wow. Dallas County. I interview him. I need awesome. him. Yeah, man. I'm you know, gonna have to hear How did you? That, how did you make guy. that happen? I went through Ebola. That was my guy. We we yeah, connected at that moment because so. he said his wife had right. Ebola. Yeah. That's crazy. And so, and so tell us about about how that experience was because that was a crazy time. People talking about COVID now, yeah. But you had to really deal with Ebola up close and personal sure. when and nobody that, else knew anything about it in here in Dallas. That's real. And not only think about that, but back then when there was Ebola. That was the big thing. And yeah. then here comes Corona, which is to us bigger than. Because, and it should be. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So we, at that point, we could not imagine anything bigger than Ebola. Yeah. Correct. So how did y'all deal with that? So I'll tell you, number one, thank God Ebola isn't airborne. Okay. Right. So um, e Ebola is passed through bodily fluids. Right. Um, shout out to my wife. Uh, she was an RN. Um, Dallas Presbyterian. Was, so she's no longer an RN? Uh, she still worked for Dallas, um, well, what do you call it? Texas Health Resources, but she's in more of a, um, uh, she worked under the president. So okay. she's she more corporate side doing the training now. Okay. So she's not in ICU anymore. Um, but that whole process, man, is, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, Corona, it's breathing the air. It's air, it's, you know, it's particles in the air. Mm -hmm. Ebola, to get it, you got to be in tune in that, that person bodily fluids. And shout out to my wife because she's so type A. <clears throat> she's so meticulous. So I, I remember us like sitting in the bed watching like all our, our brethren in Africa go through Ebola and how bad it was, was over there. And I was like, well, they ain't going to never let it get to America. <laughs> then it shows up in America. And then you get this, you know, man, this uh, man that comes over. Uh, they end up being affected with the virus, and he shows up in Texas. When you're like, dang, they said somebody in Texas got Ebola. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, me and her just sitting here. Because, you know, like work, nurses work like three days on, four days off. Right. So this is an off day. We chilling. Then he was like, oh, no, this dude is in Dallas. There's a bunch of hospitals in Dallas. They ain't tripping. Wife go to work. She called me. Boom. I got the patient. And, you know, she was a little scared or whatever. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? And I understand. But I told her, I said, I'm here. Like, you choose what you want to do. If you feel like, you know, you took an oath as a nurse that this is what you, you're not going to ever turn nobody down. And if, if this guy put on your heart to go and do this and conquer this, if you get it, I get it. It is what it is. But wow. we're going we gonna to conquer this. And last thing I want to ever do is send somebody in Feeling unsure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But she took it. You know what I'm saying? I know her. She's very type A. She pay attention to every detail. And 21, 20 some days, she worked with this this man to try to save his life. Unfortunately, he passed away. Um, I never caught Ebola because my wife shut sex down. The moment she found out that was her patient, it went no getting it no in sex. with the get in. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. You, did understand. you think about that before before that took off when you was making all them bold statements? You ain't think about it, man, but you know, it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You had to be there for her. You, you had to be there. You understood. You know but that was her protecting me because if it was me, I'd like, forget it. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's a man. Yeah, that's we a man. We like, we going in. If I die, I die. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 a, that's a, a rocky statement. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but when but no. she was dealing with him, did she contract the Ebola? Yeah, so at some point in time, um, you know, working with the patient, you know, as the dope thing about American science and people, I'm vaccinated now from COVID and a lot of people are like, man, why? Because American science, we're very intrusive, right? We make sure we get in your urine, your feces, your blood, everything, test everything to try to find the best solution. But when you're dealing with a virus like Ebola, it's passed through bodily fluids. So, mm-hmm. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't, she don't recount exactly how she ended up caught <coughs> it at what point. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, you going in, if you, you clean it up, if a person pooping, throwing up, peeing, whatever, can't do whatever for themselves. That's As fluid. a nurse, you got to do it for yourself. Right. And you exposed at any moment, at any time. Whether it's you doing something wrong or somebody forgetting to sanitize something and you didn't know they didn't sanitize because they on the other shift and you catch it, whatever. I'm not saying that's what happened with her, but she got it and didn't know but how she got it. Right. But I saw how the science worked, you know what I'm saying? And how, you know, she ended up having to take an experimental drug, you know what I'm saying? Like to keep her from dying. dying. And it worked. Shit, it worked. Man, I'm on, y'all talk about quarantine. I'm on quarantine because that's my wife. But my wife was diagnosed with Ebola on a Tuesday and was Ebola free like by Thursday. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm still on a 21 day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Quarantine. So, you know, she come back like, I can't do nothing for the most part. Right. You know what I'm saying? But she, <laughs> she cleared out. But, you know what I'm saying? But because of her type A and understanding the science and how things are done, she protected me, you know what I'm saying, and our family and everything like that. So when it came to Corona, I didn't. we didn't just jump to get the vaccine. Like, she vetted the process. Like, what is this vaccine made out of? Is this the typical way they injecting the virus to fight the virus? But this wasn't that. It's just your body already have a protein to fight corona, but this boosts the protein to help defeat it. So if you were to come in contact with it, you're less likely to catch it. Or if you caught it, you're less likely to get sick from but it. But it's so crazy because I like the way how you explain it, but then I'll have other nurses who explain will explain it that totally different, and it makes you be like, oh, um, well, I had what five. I had one nurse that, that, that through through my friend the other night. Mm-hmm. We was talking, said five people got the shot and five people died. Older people. That's real. So again, let's be honest. And you and I were speaking about this off camera. We can all take a leave, and y'all two will be straight. And I may have some type of my body is different. Yeah, you could uh, you could have a reaction to where he died. This, this is what it okay, is. Yeah. You could take both of y'all could take Pepto Bismol, and I could take it. I think because this is such a widespread mm-hmm. disease where it affected everybody at the Facts. same time, so that's what's building up the fear. Because I look at the vaccine as like when you watch TV and you say that this medicine is good for heart disease, mm-hmm. but Behind it, it says, but if you take it, you have you might can contract this, 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 this. All this, these side this, effects. All these side effects. Mm-hmm. But it might work wonderful for this person mm-hmm. over here, but this other person, although the, it cured that, mm-hmm. they come up with all of these side effects. We've taken, when I was younger, I don't know how old you are, but measles, rubella, all of these mm-hmm. other, you know, but then we weren't thinking about what are the side effects. Every medicine to me, when I'm thinking about it now, the age that I am, mm-hmm. because when you're younger, you're not thinking about Facts. all of that stuff. Now you're older, you're like, all the vaccines that I did get in the past, all of them probably did have a side effect because there's nothing made under man that does not have a side effect. That's real. But then even not just man. I mean, just think of food allergies. Right. You know what I'm saying? Anything we consume in our bodies, our bodies just respond to it differently. differently. And that's just what it <clears throat> is. So I'm not an advocate for the vaccine. I'm I'm not an evangelist. I don't go around preaching everybody should get the vaccine. I feel like men, we are so terrible at going to the doctor, you don't even know if you have an underlying condition. That's true. Is it men or is it black men? 
No, I, I just say men in general. I think men. They, just, they just men just in general. I, I'm I just asking an honest question because I don't know because. I don't think it's black men. I think men in general, we always talk to, in general, just not to show no mer- no, no um weakness. No weakness, right. No weakness. Don't show your feelings. Because like when you tell when you play sports, if you play football, basketball, baseball, whatever, if you got to. Walk it out. If you hurt, you just hurt. <laughs> if you injured, you can't play. Are you hurt or are you injured? Walk it out. Drink some water. Walk it off. And so that's how we do as men. We always check in our body. Something be wrong, but you be like, shoot, let me just drink some water. Let me just go lay down. And then when you finally hear a dude say, hey, I need to go to the doctor. It's too late. He's on the brink of death at that right. moment right. because we've been taught to suck it up. Mm-hmm. And so most men who walk around with this pompous attitude like, I ain't worried about corona. Man, only kill 1%. First of all, 1% of mankind is a lot of people dying. You got to understand that 1% is 8 million people dying. That's a lot of life. 1% of American life is, what, 300? We're past that. We're past 365,000. We have over half a million. That's a lot of people. For some people, say only 1% die. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. How was it like being married to a wife who is a nurse during the pandemic with all of, if, before the vaccine, before any of that, her going to work and dealing with all of that? Well, she, you said she wasn't in the Yeah, corporate. so at this time, um, after the whole Ebola thing, she went more corporate. So she's been in charge of like the training and things so for that THR. that helps your, ease your mind a lot? Uh, for me, it don't ease my, I mean, she eases my mind because I trust her with the science. We sit okay. down and we have a conversation. And I remember when Corona was happening, when it first kind of like kind of got out there and she could see like the numbers in the hospital increasing. And she's like, this is about to get bad. But she's not like, on the forefront where she can contract it and bring it home as much. Well, I mean, we can, true, but the it high game, it ain't happening anywhere. But, facts. Right. But she saw like the data. She's right. seeing like hospital beds, that we you know, what I'm that saying was was, that was normally not nowhere near capacity, maxing capacity everywhere. Wow. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Let me ask you this: I'm gonna get you, but pull you back into the music. Okay. What music scene in Dallas? Um, the healing part. I asked everybody about this Mo three thing because it's something that hit real because he was a aspiring artist and you mm-hmm. did you interviewed him right? I never got you only never only two people in the city of Dallas interviewed the big three. That's now, Yellow BZ, yep. Trap Boy, and Mo3. And that's Sean Cotton, the Real Life Street Stars. Yeah, them two. Them the only two that ever uh, interviewed the big three. Or you want to say the big four, throw Go Yeah Yo in there. Yeah, yeah. So when you seen all this happening, because you was closely knitted to it, too, to see what was going on, talking with Sean and mm-hmm. seeing all the, the back and forths. Because y'all best friends, so I know you seen it. You knew I ain't going to say we, we friends. <laughs> yeah, well, y'all, not, <laughs> cousin your, your cousin friend. best friend. Yeah. Well, y'all talk a lot. Y'all all talk. For sure. For sure. Uh, I got me and Quan talk. He was at my house two days ago. There you go. Okay, so now you see all of this stuff happening. Mm-hmm. Um, was there any time where where you felt like okay? Uh, do you look at yourself and say, man, is this something that that we can kind of navigate, or could be a, or we may be a part of what's going on? Mm, that's a good question. Um. In that situation, I think with any situation that's not as serious and when somebody dies or get killed, it ain't, it's not much you can do. Um, But what I challenge myself when I have any young person on on my platform, whether it's Kenny B, um, Murder Game, Peanut Butter, or uh, Pooh Bear, I just did, is I try to challenge those guys, man. And like, remember, like, man, you're in the entertainment business. It's not meant to be real it's only meant to feel real i said think about it when we go to a movie and we see denzel washington play a crooked cop he's not a crooked cop in real life yeah but what makes the movie good is because it felt real but it wasn't a real movie it's entertainment that's so that's so true that's true but the people or the kids are watching and taking it like it's real. So whatever you're saying, that's why a lot of times people have to be careful of what they say because even for Denzel, a crooked cop on the street and say his name was Joe Blow, which, Mm -hmm. but when people walk up to him, they're gonna say, hey, Joe Blow, because they're taking it like it was real, like that was who he was. No, I got you. 
Now, it's not much you can do with people who who are fans because even people who watch, you know what I'm saying, Training Day with Denzel or some people who play Grand Theft Auto, some people can't separate real from fake. And that's what we're dealing with today mm-hmm. is I'm trying to challenge these young dudes. It's like, man, you don't. You can rap about your environment. You can tell a story of what you've seen. You can tell a story about the hood, but you don't have to live it. Yeah. See, the problem with social media is social media has turned everything into the lunchroom again. You remember when you're in the lunchroom and somebody talk about your shoes? You got to talk about their shoes. Yeah. And yeah. everybody like, oh, yeah. he says your shoelace is dirty. And now. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so now <laughs> when everybody start hyping it up, oh, you ready to fight. Yeah, yeah. Social media has turned into a global lunchroom that soon as somebody say something about you so you don't look like a punk, you feel like I got to go to the extreme to protect myself. And these young kids are killing themselves and killing each other over social media comments. Let me let me just say this. I think there's – when I asked you that question, it was it, – it's a reason behind it because these microphones are so powerful. And I Facts. think that, that, that the most important thing is you can understand that there's always good and evil. And That's you right. can you can take this thing and you can treat it as a platform to where you can create something to where it can be therapeutic to the children's ears and the people that – get to hear it you know and and that's what we shooting for i know that's what i'm shooting for. now quick question i know you said good and evil but people who do evil do they really think they are being evil and no they don't think about no. it when it's going on till after the fact of you know doing whatever they are sometime in the process they know they're doing or it too it, it becomes a thing to where it's it's an exciting thing i know like <clears throat> But some when you think about Tupac doing. and people that was dealing mm-hmm. with their thing, you could they were good at it. Like it became a thing to where people knew yeah. that that this is how they perform, and they was excited about it. Yeah, gotcha. Am I right? Got you. No, that's true. But let's look at Tupac. God bless the dead. God bless the dead. He was killed by somebody he jumped in the casino. That's correct. That's that's what that's a that's one of the one things of the they say. Mm-hmm. But it's not even a theory. Um, it, if you watch the Vlad interviews. Um, yeah, I know I what for, I, I know. Forgot, I know. I forgot I know the crib, dude, they, he was in the car when it happened. When they when pop when his uh, cousin who passed away killed him, there was the dude that got jumped. It's not a good government conspiracy. I know he was bigger than life, and it, obviously a regular person couldn't kill him. We want something bigger to kill him. No, no, no. Regular person <laughs> but kill him. unfortunately, that's what happened, right? Um, with the whole Mo three thing, I don't know like the whole street side of it, but if I'm hearing what happened is he was hurt that his partner got killed. And that's the thing, like certain things start off so simple until somebody real ramification happen, and sometimes it ain't no turning back. And so that's why I be trying to tell these young dudes that like certain things it's not that serious. Like you beefing over like I seen Pooh Shiesty and, and Kodak Black get into it a couple of weeks ago yeah. over who started money spread. Yeah. Well, I, I put it like this. <clears throat> Like you said earlier, the, the, these microphones are powerful. The very voices powerful. Are, are powerful. Songs very, are very powerful. Very powerful. I think with the young people, though, a narrative has been painted with the idea of this word real, that they have to do everything that they're saying. And we, I just think it's just a lapse between what's reality and what's just entertainment. Like, people enjoy wrestling. Everybody know wrestling is not real fighting. Right. right. Yeah. We just enjoy the theatrics. It feel real at time. And I'm trying to get our rappers to understand that, man, it's okay for it to feel real. You don't have to indulge in that lifestyle. I like the way you talk. I like the fact that you're thinking that way. Yeah. And yeah. that you're voicing your opinion to these people because it matters. It yeah. matters so much that it become almost, for me, a ministry with inside the realm of what's going on with these individuals. For sure. But what and I I'm love, so serious about that. But what I, until you're put into a certain situation, you know how you don't think about certain things? Until, That's real. So it's like, until we started this platform, I never really thought about, I may have known it, but I didn't think about it. How much music can control your moods, control people. And you knew because when you see Michael Jackson and he's singing and people just fainted. Yep. And I'm looking at him like, that wouldn't be me, but yeah, I love Michael Jackson, but that's crazy. You know what I mean? The certain things, but it affects a lot of people in different ways. That's real. And interviewing 
DJs and hearing them say in a club there was a fight about to break out, but then they switched the music and did this, 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 and everybody's hugging and I'm like, dang, they control it that much. Yeah. You know, or even an artist up there and they can control the people. And I'm like, you see where the country is going. You see all of, I don't need another Tupac and Biggie. Like why not tr- show evolution and show that we've evolved from this person being killed, that person being killed. And like, <coughs> I actually asked a person that came on our show who um, have had death threats before because of different things that they went through and stuff like that. <coughs> and Excuse I can't me. ask Biggie or Tupac because they're already gone. Right. And I said to him, I said, hey, they're already gone, but you're getting death threats. How can... How can you not think of, how can you keep continuing to do what you're doing? You're not thinking about your family. Because I always say that people who keep beefing, they're being selfish because I know they have kids. They have a wife or a girlfriend or mom and stuff. That's going to miss them. And you're going to keep at this knowing that you have family who are depending on you. But over this, that you can squash. Like, why? So when I ask them that, because of what they're doing, there's like, it's, they don't think about their family when they're going through and doing what they're doing. They don't think about them. And that's real. I mean, you got to think when you are 19, because you hip hop is still a young person's game. Game. So when you find it a 16 to 23 year old, I always like to say 16 to 24. It's something about turning 25 that makes you scary and understand you got stuff to lose. But 16 to 24, 24. it's no fear of any ramifications. It's no fear of any penalty or consequences. It's no fear that you, it's, it's arrogance. I'm not going to get caught. I am the toughest. Nobody's going to shoot me. I'm going to shoot everybody. This is the, the world that we live in with these young people right now. It's, it's everybody's so untouchable and invincible. And I always, when I first got here, I was manage, managing to come about artists that were in that, that demographic. And I always kept telling them like, man, if I can get you to survive to 25, you're going to be all right. Cause it's something about 25 that clicks when you start to understand. And I guess they said that a man, a male, I hear Charleston white always talk about this as well. A male's mind doesn't fully develop until 25. 25. Mm -hmm. And it clicks, something clicks over and like, Hey, my family, like I got stuff to lose. When you young, you don't realize anything you lose. Cause you don't think you're going to lose they going to win all the time, man. That's the thing. Everybody shoot the everybody got the best shooters on their team. Everybody got the most gangster on their team. And then somebody dies. And I'm watching these young men bury their friends. And they're broken. And then two, mental health. We don't we need that in the inner city because we got PTSD. In fact, I don't know if y'all heard the Henny Fest they they normally have in Dallas. They Mm-mm. two years ago they had Henny Fest. And this one I realized all black people got PTSD and white people live life pretty good. <laughs> Cause we was at the festival and I just seen a group of black people running. I just start running too. <laughs> <laughs> I find out later if this is if we running for our lives or not. It was nothing going on. Now Sergio the Entertainer said the same thing. Black people take off running. Yeah, we do. Like, but I was looking at like some of my white friends, they just sitting there like, what's going on? Right. <laughs> like, why are everybody running? Like, <laughs> fail. I see that on memes on Facebook no, it's true. all the time. It's so true. But, but we've <clears throat> seen so much terror. We've been traumatized right. so much that if we see a few of us going through something, we we out. And and that's what we're seeing in our young communities that these kids are getting pumped full of I remember growing up, the most that people did was weed for the most part. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In my generation now, you got these kids, like, popping pills with, like, white kids. Exactly. Things. Now you got them on perks. You know what I'm saying? They taking Molly. They taking ecstasy. This was, like, rave scene stuff. Now this is infiltrated the inner city. Like, these kids need – we don't need more police officers. We need people, mental health people coming in, having conversations, <sighs> bringing solutions, figure out what's triggering – to help, but that's what we see, in, and hip hop is just reflecting. It's a musical of what's going on in the hood. That's all it is. But with all the people that we've been talking to, um, whether rappers or just people about mental health and all of that, I realize that a lot of people don't real don't notice 
that they have mental health issues till they've gotten older, really? till they go through things and realize that that's why I acted the way I, I, I rebelled when I was younger because I didn't have my father in my life or because I didn't have my mother or because I got molested or because right. whatever the case is, but you're not thinking about it when you're younger. You're just like, oh, I just don't like such and such or I'm just this, 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 this. But as you get older, you realize there was a cause. And then we've even had some people who said that I did get counseling, but some people say, well, black men do not like counseling. They don't want to go get a counselor mm. to get help. So how can we fix this generation? I don't, I don't think black men don't want to get counseling. I think we're just not educated on it. Again, I just think black culture isn't ca- educated on it because when you bring up a counselor, you ain't crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you trying to go sit down with these people acting like you crazy. You ain't crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's we need just need to be educated with it. You know what I'm saying? To say it's good to go sit down with somebody who has no ties to what's going on. So they're very unbiased. That can give you not only tips and tricks on how to help you cope with whatever you're going through, but to also help you be aware of the, what triggers you to act out that way. And and that's the thing. It's just education, whether it's health, whether it's how we eat whether it's how we spend our money. We just need that. We starting to get that education in our neighborhoods, but for so long mental health was just looking at you crazy mm-hmm. and people didn't want that stigma. Okay. All right. I'm going to get back to the music. <laughs> 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 no. Um, <clears throat> so what's the process for you? You get an interview. Yeah. One of these musicians, what's, what's your process? What, what, how do you, how do you, what make, what, how do you, Determine what you're going to ask. It's called know what going on with the, with that individual. For as if it's an album, if it's controversy, if it's gotcha. is that how you how you breaking down the process? Um, <clears throat> research. I look, I look for a story. Yeah, that backstory is important. Yeah, I want I want you to be able to come on. I don't want to go through the cookie cutter phase, right? I don't want to get you on here. Hey man, where you from? How long you been rapping? Who's your favorite rapper? Oh yeah, that's dope. And then so what you got coming up next in, in the show? That's cookie cutter. Yeah. I don't want that. So I go down a rabbit hole. I start trying to find everybody, friend of friends, whoever, that gave me some information. And I just want somebody with a story. I mean, my platform is Mogul State in Mind. So it's people who are actually making mogul moves within their respective field. How'd you come up with that name? Actually, so my studio <clears throat> is Mogul Media Studio. Okay. Uh, my podcast, which I like, kind of like how y'all had set up, it was called Mogul Moves Only. What made you get out of that? Um, I decided to leave the studio space. So you was like, I'm going to let that go. I'm just going to do mine, mo- yeah. kind of like mobile. Yeah. <clears throat> well, so I, I have an office downtown, but like the studio space was, man, it was getting dangerous. But um, so it's like when mogul moves only, um, I, like I said, I did the, the interview space when I decided to leave the studio. I hit up my nephew like, man, and I talked to Sean. I was like, bro, I want to get into the one-on-ones. I, that's the, that's what I was looking for right yeah. there. So I hit him up. I mean, I want to get to one on ones, but I don't want you to feel like I'm stepping on your toe. Oh, oh, you gave that nigga respect like that. That's my guy. That's Already. My guy. Well, what about Vlad? Did you call him? No, nah, I don't okay, know. Okay, well, what's up with that? You know, but Sean, my guy. I'm you just know messing with you. <laughs> Sean, my guy. So no, he was like, no, nah, man. You know, he's like, D man, no, bro. This is no, it's all good, man. It's you know, all good, thing, bro. And he was like, man, you know, whatever you need. You know what I'm saying? I'm there. When I first started my podcast, Sean was my first guest on there. When I did my, uh, when I decided to do like the one-on-one interview similar to his, um, he was my second guest. <clears throat> but I said, you know, I'm going to be on your head, right? He was like, what you mean? Because I was like, I'm going to take what you doing, you but I'm going to take his liking too. I'm going to take it one more, <laughs> one more step. He said, no, bro, what you mean? So when I showed up to his house and interviewed him for the first time, I had the lapel mic on him. I had my little mobile recording device, all you of that. Own it. You own it. <clears throat> exactly. I was like, bro, I'm trying to bring that quality to it. Appreciate it. Um, I wanted to bring that quality to it. So, you know, Sean hit me up one day. He was like, hey, bro, what's all that you, you use? <laughs> 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 hey, so I can say I, hey, I, I, I leveled up. No, I leveled up. I contributed to Say Cheese because now you used to only hear his echo behind the camera and hear the people in front of the camera, but now he using the mic that I use. And this is like, man, I enjoy the interviews. Yeah. But, I nah. like that. I like that because you're so respectful with, with the moves you make, man. And that's what makes you a stand-up guy. That's why I can tell why people always say you stand up. 
Because for you to say what you just said, I mean, you respect the people that you work with sure. and been around, and that's in, you know, your inner circle. And that's what it takes, man. You can't, you, I always say you can't, uh, <clears throat> you don't compete with the team, you eat with the team. That's bro. real. But you know I, I like to compete too. It makes us better. Well, yeah, it's friendly competition, though. Yeah, it's, friendly. I, it's some It's some serious competitions out here now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it come to a point Thank where you. Vlad or somebody and you on their neck, you ain't going to care like you would Sean. Shout out to Vlad, though. He did post my interview. I was on Did Vlad. he? Yeah, he posted the Rainwater joint. Oh, he, he posted yeah. it? Yeah. So, Man. Uh, that was dope. That's, that's real dope. A lot of people give him a lot of flag. Do you agree with him? Uh, No, I, I boycotted Vlad for about two months. I Why? What did he do? No, I, I think people got to understand, man, like, it, I don't feel like he just did nothing wrong for the most part. I mean, I can I understand where he stood when it <clears> came <throat> to Louis Farrakhan or whatever, you know, say Minister Louis Farrakhan said, you know, Vlad was standing for his Jewish people, like black people should for ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I understood that. So, but you so had he, to stand for yours. Right. So when Lord Jamar and Royce the Five Nine was saying, I was like, okay, shoot, we just ain't going to watch Vlad for a minute. So I unsubscribed. And it was like once I unsubscribed, all the people I wanted to watch the interview, he had them on his plate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. But I stood strong, you know what I'm saying? But it, it wasn't me trying to cancel Vlad. I don't I don't think I don't like the cancel culture. I think <clears throat> you can suspend people, sit people down for a moment, let them learn, give them the grace and the space to learn. And then bring them back and say, okay, do you understand the area of ways? If I you like do, that. then let's resume. Yeah. So Vlad, this is me giving him the grace and space to learn. Like, yo, you're not gonna come into our culture, extract all the money and everything that you're doing from our culture, and think that you could do whatever to our people. So I was just standing with our own, and just to see that he, and he lost a lot of subscribers. So what did what did you think? Because uh, Dame already had pointed that out before all that even happened. Yeah, for sure. So Dame had been pointing at people like Vlad and Leor, Leor, and all those guys. Right. He and anybody that was pretty much. You remember when we seen him in mm-hmm. Vegas at that play? Did he look like he was holding back on, to, no, on Andy Hill figure? Never yeah. He don't play back. no games. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like the, he loved standing up for his people, his man. People. And shout out to Dame Dash, man, because he always he, he every time I met him, he would stand up. Yeah, shout out to Dame. I think <laughs> I think this is the problem for me is you gotta have the right person to give the right message with the right tonality. Yeah. Because if you have a person that comes off, and not saying that this is Dame, but if you have a person that comes off as bitching all the time, complaining all the time, things ain't right all the time, it gets watered down. And so that credibility almost looks like you just ranting and upset again. Mm-hmm. And you may be truly valid, but because you ran and you was upset so much, this is just you being you again. I think I think he just pretty much is being who he is, and I think he could care less. But and and that's fair. As far as what everybody, what nobody thinks, but you know? everybody's different. So he's seven million people watch him. Some people think that he's cool and what he's saying is valid and whatever. Say even eighty percent, but the other the other twenty percent be like, uh, he's ranting, whatever. But he's touching the masses. Yeah, so that's then, real. Yeah, but another thing also, I don't agree with every single thing he says. And no man's gonna do that, not a real cat. You know what I yeah, mean? Like a certain thing you might believe in or like, I'm not gonna like. Or I might, you that's know, right. I can respect you for what you believe in, but as a man or as a person of individuality, I'm gonna stand my ground for what I feel in a respectful way. And that's the problem where you become one throwing a temper tantrum. That's real. When you when you can't talk and have a conversation and even debate at some point certain issues and still walk away and shake hands and, and, and understand that everybody has their own truth. And, and that's good mm. that everyone has his own truth, right? I think we live in a climate where everybody feel like we have to be uniform yeah. instead mm-hmm. of unified. Like we don't mm-hmm. all have to look the same, dress the same, talk the same. Everything has to be the same. That's the biggest setup. We will never achieve that. Mm-hmm. But if we're unified and understand that our common goal is liberation and freedom and equality for black people, whether your way is this way and my way is this way, but our goal is still equality and liberty for black people. As long as we're trying to achieve that, that's good. We need different avenues. We don't need everybody attacking from the same point of but access. That's, that's the same thing I say like for Charleston White. That was one of the reasons I brought him on the platform was for because sure. I know who I am and I know that there is something in me that that it's a, something that, that can be very effective toward positive change. Yeah. So I look at every every possible uh, situation in a way to where you can help somebody. For That's sure. just the way I feel I if you. I see something. So I'm, I never back down because I believe a certain way and I feel like I'm big enough for the job. I can be used. So I just I, I like to be. 
I like to be in a position where I feel like I can help. Mm-hmm. I put it like that. And I got you. Does that make sense to no, you? And that's cool. <laughs> I think that's dope. And I think the angle that y'all approached with Charleston was amazing. Oh, different from any um, other interview they ever done. For sure. But I think a lot of people like Charleston because they here for the show. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We flipped it on, man. He get so the true. flapping them arms. Oh no, no. He flipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they told me to shut up in the comments. I read some of them jokers. They said shut up and let him talk. And I'm like, because oh, that's whatever. what they used to seeing him do. Go on. A, yeah. Go on nah. Rent. You got to have a conversation. And so he's a different guy. Like at first when I when I first heard him, and this is before he did interviews. I used to just hear him rant in his yeah, car. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm not feeling this. And then, you know, I seen, you know, a couple of my peers, shout out to Dallas Global. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They started the interview and I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't get it. But once I watched them enough to yeah. start hearing them say like, man, I remember hearing, one, watching one of the OGs talk to the kids in the neighborhood. When you talking to them like, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. They don't listen. Yeah. But when you say, hey, mom, this, yeah, this, yeah, this yeah, and yeah. that, the kids start responding. Yeah. yeah. And I said, ah, I kind of get what his yeah. approach is. Now, he say some, some crazy stuff. Outlandish. But but uh, Elijah Muhammad said some crazy stuff. Yeah, I don't think he on Charleston. Charleston. No, White. no, I'm just saying like <laughs> he would say things beast. to make you change your perception. He, even though it, it might not be as far out as what Charleston, but he still would say things that would ignite a change in you. Yeah. And that's what sometimes what you just explained was that. You know right, what I mean? Everybody needs to be addressed in a different way to, for it to get through to them because – I can come across to you in a nice, sweet way and say A, B, C, but somebody else say A, B, C in a very outlandish way, and you get what they're saying, but I'm like, but that's the same thing I was trying to tell that's you. Real. But yeah, yeah. Why did I have to take it there for you to understand? But everybody. It's different. Right. It's just like playing sports. You got some coaches who yell at a kid, and then when you yell at them, that kid shut down. Yeah. And you got some coaches that come on to the kid like, hey, man, all you got to do is X, Y, and Z, and, and get the kid get it. Yeah. But then you got another kid, that coach who said, hey, man, just do that. That he, ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. He need that coach. To get your, uh, that's right. That's right. So everybody has their thing. That's totally home. different. But as long as our goal is equality and the freedom, mm-hmm. we're good. We don't have to be uniform. We just need to be unified. Exactly. Okay. That, well, that makes sense. So I got a question. Here we go. So um, have you ever had a uh, guess? A guest who is dull. Yes. And how do you approach and get them vibrant? If you ever did get them. You don't. <laughs> how did you handle it? It's like pimping. It's like ism. It's either it's in you. It's not on you. I get it. I get that. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes people just, that's who they are. And I just get that interview over with fast <laughs> as hell. <laughs> I don't want to try to push you to be you. You want to be on here and be boring? Or you want to be cool, too cool to answer everything? Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? I just do stuff. And do you hey, still put it out? Yeah, you know, I put it out. You embarrass yourself. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It. But I do I do have some interviews that I never put out, though. Because it we was do that too. Bad. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes if I was just like, bro, this is just, I'm not. I'm not. It's If it's so dry to the point that they don't even represent right, the that's integrity what, that's in my platform. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not putting it out. How did you move during COVID time did, as far as interviewing? Did you shut down for a while? Man, shut down for a long time. We did, too. Uh, Cause I had actually bought this stuff a year when, when COVID first hit, I went out and purchased the equipment and I was going to do it. And then that happened and I just kind of laid back. So you've seen us come on with it the last three yeah. months. Three we months. just, okay, we feel to go in. Yeah. I'm full force. We <laughs> <laughs> say, hey, we out here. We out here now. We going to get out here and try to do what we thought to do at first. You oh, know? I'm trying to think when did I, I, I don't want to say I shut down March like everybody yeah, else in yeah, the world. Yeah. And when did you start back up? Because I was with January, right? Yeah. Uh was it um Kenny B was that doing code? No one. Uh I, you know, I can't remember. I I I know that my page took a hit though. Oh yeah. Like I was going doing, you know, saying doing pretty good. And then I stopped for all the months. No content, no nothing. And then try to start back up. And boy, it almost felt like I was starting all, all over, over again. Yeah, yeah. Which got the butt. So, but so, it's so crazy because you would think that being in this industry during the pandemic, because everybody's at home bored, the only thing they have to do is be on YouTube and social media, that you would think that you'd want to go in. 
That was the purpose on January. I was like, okay, uh, so yeah. all of them stopped. I mean? Okay, I'm gonna show y'all something. Y'all want to stop? I got something yeah. for y'all. That's the way I said I was gonna do it. But y'all, y'all know how we are as consumers, man. The most, the biggest thing that other than quality that we like is consistency. Yeah, yeah. That's that we it. can count that's on it. that you're gonna give me something new. And when you sit on this page and it's like dead and nothing else new is coming after they done went through the rabbit hole and watch everything, you, it's like Netflix. You found that show like you, you know, binge you know, watch and then you get to the end and realize that ain't no more seasons and they ain't <laughs> like I don't know if y'all watched Alter Carbon. No, no, that was my show, man. I loved it and I binge watched it only to find out that they stopped making the show, that so nothing else pissed. comes out. And that so hurt. That hurt. It hurts. And, and but that's what we doing to our fans as well is we go take that hiatus and they don't went and watch everything and nothing new comes. I keep trying post. to think of this guy, man. Up there with y'all, man. He had to, he was like the gatekeeper, man. He had he was on Breakfast Club and he had a uh, old girl with him. Uh, from where? From I thought he was from Detroit, but he trick, might, trick. that's it. Why you pick out so? My name is Trick. Yeah, trick. so did hey. you ever? You, he from up there where he you from at? Detroit, man. Shout out to Trick Trick, trick man. Trick, man. So do you ever interview him, or you ever thought about going to interview him? Man, I want to interview Trick Trick. Um, shout out to him. I know he doing his thing. Got a show on Shade Four Five. Actually, I'm hoping. When I go back to Detroit here soon, I get to sit down with him. Funny, you knew exactly what I was yeah, talking trick, about. Trick, yeah, trick, man. He, he, no he flies on. Yeah, he, he the man. He the man up there. You know what I'm saying? And, and, Check and, in. And, and what about your boy, uh, uh, Big Sean, the one on that picture with me down hey, man, there? Shout out to Big Sean, though. You know, he be in L.A. now. Oh, yeah, so he, he, can't, he, city, so he don't be in the city like that. He, I mean, he came through for that Detroit, too, though. Shout out to Big Sean with that album. That boy was fire. Yeah. Um. But what, yeah, Sean, Big Sean be doing this thing, What is Dage Loaf doing, man? What the heck is Dage Loaf doing? She just dropped a project, man. That joint hard. Okay, why you ain't interviewing her? You got to go get your you people, know, man. So you got to understand that. Like, shout out to people. Detroit is doing a thing on the music scene. Sada Baby, 42 Doug, T Grizzly. You know T. what I'm saying? Grizzly. Peasy. You know what I'm saying? Like, Detroit is going 40, I mean, uh, the whole band game, band game Lonnie. You know what I'm saying? Like, they doing a thing. So when they go off, they gone. So do you ever you ever try to say okay I'm gonna go and try to get this person, or you just connect with different people that you know I try to get them, but a lot of times like when I went to Detroit, a lot of them was in wasn't LA. even there. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was, but everybody come to Dallas, and that's they the do. Thing. That's and it. Sometimes I need to sit put. I be so busy trying to chase, but Texas is where the money at. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if and if anybody know you come here and get a bag in Texas, it ain't no federal tax. I mean, no state tax. That's it. Because. You know, playing football, like, people don't realize, like, man, you got to pay taxes based on every state you go get money in. Yeah, so yeah. So if you come into Texas, you're not paying that state tax. So everybody come here to get that maximum bag and get don't have bag. to put out. That's it. So sometimes I got to learn, man, just stay put. Casado was here. You know, 42 Doug was here. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. But Trick Trick, man, shout out to him, man. That's definitely an OG. Trick Trick is the one, one. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to do that interview, too, because he, he he be, yeah, they say the gatekeeper up there. Say he, say he, he letting him in. No fly zone. He can't come up there. I came up there, but I don't know. You know, I ain't but, in the entertainment. So, <laughs> so let me, if I was in entertainment, I had to check in. But the, the <laughs> whole perspective of the check-in wasn't that some you call or we're going to meet you up. The problem was this. Trick Trick knew that labels were sending their artists to Detroit and making money. Mm -hmm. But those artists was coming there and wasn't putting local artists on their shows. Wow, that's they a problem. A feature that's a problem. with the that's artists. a big problem. So he was like, look, quit sending them here and they're not helping here. Right. I agree so with you. So when it. you send them here and they're not helping here, it's going to be a problem. And so they start sending certain artists and it's been a problem. Yeah. But that happened, what, 2011, 12? Yeah, I remember it was strong then. Now look at Detroit popping. Because of what Trick Trick did, now you got Sada Baby. Like all the people I just named, Detroit going crazy right now. Wow. So did, we didn't ask about the top three there. No, not yet. Yeah, let's get them with them top three. You top know. three artists of all time, dead or alive. Ooh, ooh, Any genre. Ooh, ooh, so ooh, ooh, I know ooh, you, ooh, you, you, ooh, you deal with a lot of rappers, but it doesn't have to nah. be a rapper. Hey, no, nah, top I, I, three artists of all time. My, hey, my guy, look, man, we'll still be friends. I know you ain't from the South like me, but, you know, give me them. Uh, no, I'm talking about. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Hey, I was born in the boot, but I was raised in the glove. Yeah, too. you left. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you didn't have no other choice. I, I was 11 months. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so number, so one. number one is who? Jay Z. Ho. Oh, no, not Jay. No, I'm just kidding. Jay is my guy. I mean, I like, I, I think he's a. He, are you going by business perspective or, or Music, lyrics? Business, everything. Okay, all right. So I, I'll give you that. Ho. Um, shit. Number two. 
Man, y'all, y'all put me in three. Yeah, that's y'all how gave we me do three. it. Three. You only get three. Everybody always ha- have it Ooh. so hard. Yeah, yeah, three. yeah. Because that's why I did it that it, way. It, it, it just depends I want, on I my want season. You, you got to do it. You got to give me the dog, the ex, DMAs. Really? They don't. Man, hey, the only time in my life I ever looked like a groupie in front of my wife. <laughs> you seen DMX? Oh, my God. You got to understand how <laughs> embarrassed I was, right? You remember the Bad Boy reunion? Yeah, tour yeah, 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 yeah. So we went to that. And you know, DMX ain't with Bad Boy. And they was like, well, they're going to have a surprise guest. I'm like, we in Dallas. This is going to probably be either DOC or Erica Badu. Yeah. God dang, I heard. Oh, yeah. Yo, and I grabbed my head and I start jumping like this. <laughs> and my wife looked at me like, what like, the heck like, are you oh, doing? Like, yo. And I, I'm like, yo, I just lost it, man. Like, and I hope he pulled through, man. man. Say, how, Shout how, out how to DMX and his that? family, bro. Man, I, I his, oh man, it, it hurts because like you hear his story and how he ended up getting addicted to drugs. I don't know if y'all heard that story. Never heard that story. Um, just knew that he was on drugs a long time. So just real brief, did make say he was fourteen years old. He had a guy that he looked up to, that was like a, a uncle, a big brother, OG. whatever. He never did no drugs, never drank, never smoked, no nothing. The first time he ever hit a blunt, it was a blunt laced with crack. And that's when he got addicted by somebody. And he broke down in tears. I can't remember what interview it was. And he was just like, I don't understand why he would do that to me. Wow. So from 14 years old, that man been struggling with Fighting. a piece of crack. Fighting. Wow. Fighting. And I'm sure he's went to rehab and came back. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times. Many time. times and all of that. He was just, just in rehab. He had checked his self in rehab not too long ago because he felt like he was going to relapse. And my man, man relapsed. relapsed. And it's like, damn, and he... That interview was so powerful. He was just like, yo, like I'm 14. This dude was grown. Wow. Handed him a blunt lace with crack. Yeah. yeah. And that's. Hate to hear that, man. Shoot. Hope he gets better. So, but my top three, whole, I'm a, right now I'm going to stick Hove with whole DMX. DMX and give me Andre 3000. Andre 3000. Yeah. Say, man, you you know, you have you checked out Asshole and Go? Is it anytime anybody say Andre <laughs> I 3000, haven't. I think about you, him. Hey, you got to check him go. out. That's the, we just interviewed him. He signed at Erica Badu. She she oh, basically we'll let she you jumped. See her yeah, we we'll, I let you hear. It. I'm about to check it out, bro. It's stupid. Like you, hey hey, that's why I I, I, I was telling Corey about him, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, but I just was hollering at him today, man. Okay. He, he fresh dog. That's dope. You got to interview him, man. And personality. Oh, he dope, bro. Awesome. It, it, that name sound familiar. He young. Yeah, he right? living down Dallas. Here. Yeah. No, he about 30, 30, 31. Okay. It, okay, but but his, it, but, style, but his style, his style is just like Andre. Andre. Oh, you are gonna love him. He put clothes, together and he ain't trying like, to do it. But it's if just, you if you ask me this tomorrow, my top three would probably still be Hove, and then it may switch to Eminem and Kanye. Oh, so, no, nah, not Eminem, so not, go, so not the boy from Eight Hove, Mile. Detroit, really? Man, so you know Hove is the constant. In Hove your life. is the constant. A lot of them boys up there that way. They, that's what they I'm think. I'm from Detroit, man. What you nah, I'm nah, represent nah. for the whole time. Yeah, he so going, he going up that way with it, you know. And I get it, you know what I'm saying. But no I'm in the UGK, south. It's, no it's definitely UGK. MC, no, it's definitely that. all that. It's just not with him. Outcast, eight ball, then UGK. Oh man, no, <laughs> man, that man, that man tripping, man. Don't even worry about it. On God, that's what Jesus wanted. <laughs> Yeah, see, she loving that. Look at her. She loving it. Uh, but, you know, you know, that's why he come in. I'm a big Pimp C fan. MC, that's what, just you from R. Texas. Bumby, no, no, it ain't that. just I'm from Texas. They did good music. And I was you here. from Texas. No, no. you And you from Detroit. That's but, what I'm saying. but at the end of the day, when you I grew up, Texas. I didn't listen at Hove. I listened at Pimp C. So. Uh, I mean, I feel you ain't a pimp. You's a fairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm from Pimp. I'm from, I'm from it. And even before that. You know, it goes back to tell me something good. It's Let something totally. You. Yeah, so it's something at a at a at a, uh, at a track. Let me ask you a question. Listen, it's something at a at a at a at a track or at, or at a club, and I was young, and and it's a whole different Let vibe me for you. me. Where and even Jay Z realized that too. Now, don't get it twisted. Jay Z the goat. Jay Z rock with them dudes. You know what I mean? For sure. Where was Crew music originated? Houston. Who originated it? DJ Screw. Okay. Can I tell y'all something about that? What's up? I was confused because you know Detroit, we speed everything up. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Like, do you understand like how chopping screw slows every day? Y'all speed chopping everything chopping. up. Yeah. Detroit speeds everything up, so everything that you hear on the radio regular is actually sped up faster. Wow. See, I so, never heard screw till I came here and I was in college, and I heard one of my roommates bumping this thing. I'm like, 
Jacina, like, Jacina yeah. loved that's, you. That's who it was. Jacina loved And it. she was bumping it, and I was like, that is so slow. What the world are you listening to? <laughs> what, what is that? Pop, 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 my trunk. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you got to understand, I come from the land and everything sped up. So they my, mess you up, Because huh? I used to come down here as a teenager. And my cousin was like, hey, man, you got to listen to this DJ Screwers. Chop, 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 chop. <laughs> and I'm like, this shit slow as hell. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, no, it's all good. Okay. But, but yeah, yeah, it's slowed up. But you talk slow, we think fast. But, yes, but we sped up. So you got to understand the dynamic for me is this is super slow. Because people who hear songs in a regular tempo, they was like, okay, this is a little bit slower. But we're the opposite of Texas. It's almost dang near chipmunk. <laughs> how sped up it is because we got this dance move in Detroit called Jitten and y'all be going in and they feet be they in like in like football drills in the club you know it's just like they feet be moving <laughs> I think real I seen fast. that then yeah. wow. I know that then they do the hands like yeah, that yeah they be that, doing yeah, that yeah I've seen that so everything is sped up to that tempo if you hear so Detroit all beats rappers rap fast in Detroit no that's just the music tempo they the speed up yeah. tempo but do they rap fast as yeah. well they, they don't do a twister fast but the beat itself like if you go listen to Sada Baby um, 42 Doug, T Grizzly, anybody now, the tempo is sped up because of how we always sped up everybody else's wow. music. See, I couldn't live out there. <laughs> no. Not only because it's it's darn well too cold all the time. Facts. But like That's where my here, daughter live. I'm, I would did live. But even here, when rappers come on and he let me listen to some music and stuff like that, I'm like, I don't understand what they're saying. Yeah, she never understands it. If it's too fast for me, I like when you go slow. So I'm like, because I'm the type of person, I want to hear what you're saying. Got I want to hear your words. You want bars. I want bars. Got you. But if I don't hear bars, the only thing I like about your music is the beat. So they're not rapping fast. So if you go here to Sada Baby, you heard that. Let me see you do your dance and these thousand dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you hear how fast that beat is, but he wasn't rapping fast. It's just the beat. The beat is fast. fast. Okay. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Man, Mogul Media, man. So where are we looking to be at this year? What's your what's your goals? What's your aspiration? What's going on? Man, you know what? I just want to conquer more stories. I want to hear more people's journeys. I want to hear the failures. I want to hear the successes. I want to hear the lessons learned. And that that's really what I'm about, man. That's what, I'm going to travel, so I'm out of here again. Go on. Hey, boy, I got them two shots. I'm glizzied up. So, you know what I'm saying? Back to Atlanta. I got to do Money Move. He got that song hitting that's going crazy right now. Um, and I'm working on, like, this whole... Um, you said you got to do... Are you you dealing with artists? Huh? You dealing with artists or, or no? No, I'm not. Well, shout out to Mia Eliani. I'm actually work, helping her right now in the DF Dub, but... I'm going out more on a, my own little tour. Okay. Okay. But I'm actually trying to set it up where I bring more blogs with me. So, like, for example, I go to North Carolina. Shout out to Fuses TV. I want to be able to bring them, bring Dallas Global. If y'all interested in traveling, bring y'all and help host the event where artists can come. But it's a place where it can be multiple rooms where y'all can set up and that's interview cool. artists like right there and there. Mm-hmm. And they don't and have to passion. wait for different days. Just go from room to room. Room to room. Just jump cool. around. That's mm. cool. And then on top of that, I do, you know, it's like kind of my little publicist work. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to help artists get on places like this. So is this what y'all. you do 100% of mm-hmm. the time? You don't have any other career? No, I work. I work. I work. I'm a, um, I'm an executive at a mortgage company. I got a team. I'm over foreclosure, so I'm the person that you I don't ever want to yeah, come yeah, to. No, no. I, oh, you don't find the house. You take them. No, em. I send You people. take them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, take I, them. Yeah, that's what you want to say. I take them. <laughs> Uh, so, okay. So, 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 okay, hold on. I'm so, sorry. how long you said you've been married again? It'd be six years, six May years. 29. You have kids? Two. Four, okay. Five years old and one year old. So, with you traveling all the time, do you take her with you? No. I say I take the side check. So. <laughs> <laughs> I told you about that, didn't I? He, he already seen that coming. We talked about it earlier. We know how you coming. <laughs> so, you take so the I, side check. I'm, that's why I'm ignoring that. I'm ignoring that. Because <laughs> so, I know he's playing. But um, so how does she handle that? I mean, it is. But with you being gone all the time and stuff, because you know we women, especially when we're dealing with kids and doing all of that, we we like y'all help sometimes. How often do you go anyway? I ain't been nowhere. <laughs> Corona or, or had me I at the crib. How dog. often do you plan to on go, starting yeah, huh. to no, go? Like like once a month, but I don't mind taking her. Oh, you don't? I don't mind taking her. Um, but the 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 biggest thing is like if I take her, I do want to take her mom because. My son is off the chain. He gonna talk nonstop. But so that's you know, the babysitter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But for the most part, that's the, my wife, the homie, man. Like that's 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 my guy. 
Uh, really? lady, uh, really? you know, I don't know what you mean. That's so, good. That's so good. Um, Mogul Media, man, uh, how did you meet Trill? Talk no pill talk. Did Jeff, Jeff hook that up? Or no, actually, I knew I met Jeff a minute ago. Actually, I interviewed Jeff. Trill talk pill talk. No pill talk. Hit me up for an interview. Okay, kind of just like Jeff did. You know what I'm saying? And then I brought them both on, and we, that's what's we got up. it in. I, that's, that's my it. that's my guy, you know. Like I said, his family, my family, I know him all his most of his life, you know. He's doing his thing. He's he's definitely coming up, he making yeah, that move. And he's, he's, he's making he's doing things. Me and him talk a lot. He's doing things that I like. Uh, for his uh, he's putting the information out there. He's gotcha. putting it. He's pushing like whatever come out. I don't have to worry about looking for it. He's gonna push it to me. He's gonna like, e look at this, and I don't even have to look for it. He putting out everything. But before y'all close me out. I you know, know we about got to, about yeah, to close, close you out. out. Yeah, I know. Because when you hit me with the whole, so what you got working on, I've I been doing this <laughs> shit. But, hey, <laughs> this boy before, did. y'all been married, what you said, like 20 years? 18. 18. 18. Coming up in May, actually. Me and my wife have this debate all the time. I say women don't get married for love. Men get married for love. Women get married for money. But wow. they try to hide it behind security. I agree with that. No. 100%. 100%. Cause you can't go broke. It's, I know I'm not getting none if my wife coming in with her hand on her head and the electric bill is this. Yeah, no, nah, we okay. don't. We don't even talk about okay. electric bill. That's uh, dead. Like all that, I have to. Be, I'm way up. Okay, I y'all may answer the question. Y'all ready for me to answer that go, question? Go ahead. Let me hear. Is it love or money? For me, it's love. It's not for money, at all. Because my point of view is, we can work to get that together whether you have it or not, but we have to have that chemistry. We have to have God in the middle of our I agree relationship. With that. You know what I For mean? For sure. Because when you go through hard times, if you don't have God, you have nothing to hold on to. It's not going to last. Got you. So I don't look for the money part because money is not something that I'm like, if we both working and we working hard to, we going to make money. So I'm going to counter you. So it's about the money. See, the thing what you're saying is that he got the potential to make the money. We have the potential. To yeah, make but what you're saying is that we meaning that you see you and you also see him being able yeah, to grind and go to, get it. To, you have to see that. You have to see that. But if he broke, and has no in- ambition to get to the money. Right. That love the will run out. The potential has to be there. I, I would hope, you know, like I said, over the years, I've, I've God's been good to me. He, he made it to where I. Boss talk, marriage counseling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go in. You know, uh, <laughs> I may. I mean, God made it to where we we've we've not been in need. So you know, I don't even know how that how that would feel. Gotcha. Over the last twenty some years, God's been so good to me. I'm a hustler, man. So I, even with or without her, I'm I'm winning. Gotcha. So as far as on the monetary thing, it's always been something I've done well. Got you. Always. You know what I'm saying? You always worked. I've always either worked or hustled or flipped. Got you. I, I, and so just same as like you. You, you, sure. you side hustling. You're doing this. You're doing that. That's what real men do. And so I don't know nothing about that other side. And I don't think I will the way God is. But terminal illnesses happen. Got you. All type of stuff that can counteract everything. So you just never know. And I believe that long as for me, as long as I got God in the middle, it don't matter. So I believe this until I bring y'all on my show and we will continue this. That's what I'm talking about, baby. In my opinion, love is not a marriage is not about love. Adam and Eve didn't date each other and fall in love. They was put together. It was business. I need y'all to I made I made you a helpmate. This helpmate help you govern and cover the earth like I need you to do it. Okay. Women talk about Boaz and Ruth. Yeah. But if you look at that story, every woman say, I want a Boaz. But Boaz was a ball and rich dude. He had and Ruth did had nothing. Mm-hmm. And her mama told her what to do to go get that rich dude. Go lay at his feet. Yeah, his, her mother-in-law. Her yeah. mama told her how to go get the money. Yeah. So my whole thing is the idea of marriage has never been about love. It's always been about business. My daddy had 100 goats. Your daddy had 100 goats. We both had a son, had a daughter. Now we got... Two hundred goats, we an empire. I get what you're saying, but then I you got to look at Mary and that. Joseph. That wasn't a jo- Mary. Ain't, that wasn't that about was business. No- she was 13. He was grown. <laughs> that was business. <laughs> That's, you see, that- I see where you're saying, and I've heard a lot of women say that. I've heard a lot of women, like 
Tiny, Tiny have said that before, yeah. where her aunt told her, you know, go after the money. But luckily that when she found T.I., she got the money and she got the love Facts. all in one. But She's in love when they got money. Very <laughs> easy. Very Facts. easy. But nobody don't want nobody broke. Gucci like Man that. said the same thing. Good. This is Gucci Man cause said of the same thing. Nobody broke. want no broke love. Uh, broke is the number one cause of or divorce. De- or, or, or debt, the which is broke. Broke. Number one cause of divorce. Yeah, the house gone. We got to break up. We don't want nobody to see this. Nothing dries up WAP like broke. That's it. I agree with you, bro. 100%. Hey. You need, we need to do a whole show segment on that weekly. But we probably have to get somebody else. She ain't going to hey. be ready for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She I'm ain't going to be ready for that. She going to be, she got, they trying to hold up dignity. At, they trying no, to hold I up integrity. Per- I don't know nobody else. They I can't talk for nobody else. I'm just talking about me. Uh-huh. Hey, you know, shout out to you. I, I just told my wife I ain't going to go broke. And I just pray I'm gonna be I don't pushing. Well, I think that the main thing is. <laughs> money helps. I'm not going to say don't help, but that's not the initial, you know what I mean? Yeah, but when you go broke, it's a clock that start ticking. Oh, yeah. No, because no. <laughs> no, I ain't even no it depends on, because for me, it depends on, as I said, him and where his mindset is. Because gotcha. when you go broke, we're like, okay, baby. Let's How long go we going to be broke? Let's go work. I can go clean house. I can go do this. We can go do this. But because you lost this job, that's not the end of this. We gonna figure this out. We gonna work together to make what we need to make. And shout out to you. That's a, that's amazing. That's beautiful. But what you just said is he's on the clock. We're gonna go out here and we're gonna make this money back. <laughs> no, you're not. Gonna but we're not gonna. St- we're not gonna stay here no, long. You're not. Who wants to stay? About that, that money. I feel you. To the money. I, I hear you. Not, no, because teamwork is you gonna you gonna make things happen. You gonna work together to For make sure. it happen. It doesn't work like that. We 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 gonna, we gonna top it up, man. I, I, I'm I for like sure, how y'all man. Talk about you know, I think I think you always invited on the show. Now you done found you a new home to come to when you want to do this. Hey what man, you used to I do. I get to be the repeated guest. Yeah, you can of come course. back, man. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and throw us them, hey, throw us them gems and jewels if I, you see something we can improve on too. We listen, we love. Construction. I know y'all perfect. Yeah, we. <laughs> everybody <laughs> say that. Perfect. Everybody say they that. love this I show, don't right? Buy that because there's no such thing as perfection. Hey, well, today we just we, we discovered perfect. Everybody, you he say. He know why they liking the show. He see why. Like hey, it's, it's going it, in. Like it's a vibe. Like we kicking it, and it's okay to be perfect for sure. Okay, <laughs> for sure. I'll take it. I'll take it. Save right. man. Boss talk one hundred and one. Man, and we out. You did.